Hello everyone, my name is Noah Raven and welcome to the Xander Zone. In today's episode, well, we're going to be a little more serious, as this is a topic I've been thinking of for a long time now. In this episode, we will be discussing the FNAF community, and I'll get into what this video has to store in sections so you get the debrief on what to expect. First, we will discuss the elephant in the room, as well as one of the most personal sections of this video, anger in the community, specifically what I and other content creators in the realm see. Next, we will be discussing theories, specifically what a theory is. Then we will discuss the canonicity of things in FNAF, specifically what the term canon means in a multiverse. Next, we will discover more on my end, which is behind the scenes. This will dive into what goes into making a theory video for me, so you all get a better understanding why I can't always go nuts with theory videos. Next, we have a couple special guests joining us for some interviews, as I and other YouTubers feel the same way I do when it comes to making theories and posting them on the internet, so I thought we'd get some outside information on the matter. Next, we will talk about what we could do better as a community. And lastly, my final thoughts. I know it's not really a theory, but this is something that has been growing in the back of my mind that I need to share with everyone. Though, I also want to give a few disclaimers here. First is, I love the FNAF community. There is no hate towards anyone or anything in this episode. It's just a video calling out things I and others see and what we could do to be better. There will be further disclaimers throughout the video, so please make sure to watch the whole video second for second. So, for this episode, I'm not going to have a subscribe goal or ask for a subscription. All I want is for you to comment your thoughts or opinions on this, as well as to share this video so that more people get the message. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Okay, so as a warning and a disclaimer, to prove my points, there will be comments from videos of my own that will show on screen when I mention something where something like that comment has happened. However, if you see your comment, there's no hate or anything, just an example and nothing more. All names have been cut out of the comments, and if anyone goes back and finds those comments and harasses anyone, you will be banned from my channel, as there's no place for that in my community or the FNAF community. Now that we got that out of the way, let's discuss anger in the FNAF community and mine as well. Now, growing up, people said that FNAF was a toxic community, and I never believed it all the way until recently, as I just wasn't a content creator that had any traction in the FNAF community until recently. And even then, that's a very small amount of traction. Now, I just want to say this. I have made a decent amount of theories, a lot actually for a starting out FNAF theorist and YouTuber. Some of them were good, some of them were mediocre, and some were just flat out bad. However, no matter what, they all get criticism, which isn't an issue at all. Constructive criticism is how not only as people do we grow, but also how we can solve FNAF. However, I've noticed that once I start to cover topics that are very popular, to the point to where some people believe a theory is fully canon, such as Molten MCI, even though it's still a theory, and I try to challenge that theory, or maybe forget a thing or two, or get something wrong while covering that theory, that's what the criticism turns into hate. So, now on screen, you can see that the comments I viewed as constructive criticism have now turned into what I consider either hate or just hurtful criticism that actually does nothing to help the theory grow or call something out in a nice manner. And I want to say something not just to these people, but just people who leave comments like this on videos covering their favorite theory or videos challenging their favorite theory. I get it. There's nothing wrong with being passionate about a theory that you really, really like. However, to respond to videos that cover your theory or challenge it, isn't the theorist trying to attack you or the person who made it, but probably someone just trying to solve FNAF or say, hey, what about this point of evidence I or someone else found? Which is why I want to now go back to what I believe is constructive comments. These are all people who I respond to on almost every single video. It's because they ask questions, bring good points, and just have a conversation with you. That's what constructive criticism is, a conversation about the topic where two people or more come together to discuss their views, bring evidence, and ask questions to better their knowledge on the topic. So the more we spread knowledge, the more we will help each other build theories, which means the closer we will get not to only solving FNAF, but bringing in new people into the community. This is just one final thing I wanted to mention, which is fear of the FNAF community. Now, I know some people are going to say, why is anyone scared to join the FNAF community? And to you, I have to say this. Did you not see those comments on screen earlier? Anyways, I just want to say I do have a friend who is indeed afraid to get back into FNAF because of toxicity in the community. They left around FNAF's dislocations release and they never came back and are more scared to do so when I try to get them back into FNAF. The reason I'm sharing this story is because if this is one person who feels this way, 
I just wonder if anyone else feels this way or if anyone has other friends or family that feel that way. And if you're comfortable with it or your friend or your family member is comfortable, please do share that story as I'd love to learn about it and see if there's anything I can do to help. Though, now that I've covered really the main part of what I want with anger in the community, let's get into theories. Okay, so first, I want to cover what a theory is. First, I'll explain what the definition of it literally is, then more so what it means in terms of FNAF. So, the definition of a theory is a supposition or system of ideas intended to explain something, especially one based on general principles independent of the thing to be explained. This essentially means that this is a bunch of ideas, aka educated guesses in most cases, to try to explain something based on the foundation of the topic you are trying to explain. So, for FNAF, the equivalent of a theory is gaining evidence that you think supports an idea. For example here, we'll use the furnace and help one one for Molen MCI to try to explain the principle of the topic. For example, we'll use the Silver Eyes trilogy as our base here for Molen MCI, as that is pretty much what sparked the whole theory. So essentially what I am saying is that every theory pretty much follows this. When you look back at a popular theory, such as Molten MCI, it has a starting point that sparked the theory. The rest of Molten MCI is pieces of it we have found to try and make it hold to explain what happens in the games. So, for evidence, this would be things like Molten Freddy, The Furnace and Help Wanted 1, Candy Cadet Stories, and more. So, basically the point I'm saying is Molten MCI is a theory. The purple guy being the villain of the series is a theory that was later confirmed to be canon. The books being canon, or not, is a theory. Five children going missing and being stuffed into the animatronics is a theory that was later confirmed to be canon. Next point with this is essentially the biggest part of this lesson, which is to keep an open mind and know the difference between a theory and what is canon. There's nothing wrong with using a theory as a point to your own theory, but there is an issue with saying that a theory is 100% canon when it isn't. So with things like this, it can lead to hate when you really do think a theory is canon or try to challenge a theory that is very popular and possibly canon. So please continue to be passionate about theories you enjoy, but keep an open mind, be kind, leave emotion out of it, and just have fun theorizing. Though, let's get into the next part, which is canonicity. Okay, so I'm writing this a few days before the Into the Pit game comes out, so no matter what the answer is to it, if we get any at all, the point still stands here with other aspects of FNAF in general. With the books, amongst other things in FNAF, the books is just an example here, the canonicity of the books at the time of writing this is unknown. There is evidence for both sides, yes. However, evidence for both is murky at best, as I have some points to bring up when it comes to canons in FNAF and just media as a whole. First is... There's book characters in the games, so it must be canon. If this was the case, it should also translate to games characters being in the books. It means it must be canon to the games, right? Which means the movie, Silver Eyes Trilogy, the Joy of Creation, which has the FNAF animatronics in it and is being funded by Scott himself currently, should all be canon to the games, right? That's one of the biggest issues I see with that point. The other one is how canon works in a multiverse, in any multiverse. Well, I want to reference this, and I won't play it to avoid copyright, however, it comes from Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, in which Miguel is explaining to Miles what the Spider-Verse is and how it works. Miguel describes the multiverse as having canons, however, an event for example is saying the Raimi-verse is canon to just that Spider-Man, however, it isn't canon to Miles' universe, as those are two different universes. Kinda like how Miles, in one universe, is meant to be canon to be Spider-Man, and the other to be Prowler. One is canon to its universe, and the other is canon to its universe. They don't overlap, however, they are connected in some ways. But essentially what I'm saying is that the books or any media FNAF-wise can have characters from each other's universe in similar aspects, but it doesn't mean they are one and the same. So we can have the mimic in the game universe, however, it may not be the same mimic we see in the books. However, how they act are very similar, as the universes may be closely connected in this multiverse. So for all we know, the Fast or Frights books, the Into the Pizza Plex books, and more could just be a series of different universes, or could be their own two separate universes, with their own canons that may be similar to the games, but not quite. This also goes into the bait with really anything FNAF related. People can have their opinions and theories and sides. However, when the dust settles and we get an answer, we should take that answer whether we like it or not and move on with it and be happy we even got an answer. 
we shouldn't laugh at the other side. Maybe a joke is fine here and there, but to make fun of the other side for thinking, for example, Gregory is a robot, isn't okay. So at the end of this, I wanted to just send the message of something being canon in general doesn't mean we know what universe it's canon to until we get something that flat out connects it to another universe. So the mimic just being a character in the books and games isn't enough to connect the two just yet. I also want to send the message of just accepting theories, debate about them, wait for an answer or enough evidence and whether that theory is right or wrong to be happy, kind, calm, and respectful about those results. Okay, so funnily, I'll be recording and editing some of this on PC, which is exciting. However, I want to go into what it takes for me to make a theory video. So if you don't know, up until recently, I have recorded and edited purely off of my PS5 on something called Share Factory. It's a very annoying thing to use, so here's what I had to do to make a video on the PS5. First, you of course had to figure out what to theorize about, whether it be covering an already made one or making one up because you realize that there's a minor detail and you want to see how far it really goes. After that, you have to write a script, which for me is usually around 2,000 to 3,000 words. After this, we can get started on recording. This can take anywhere from a day to two days, depending on how much I suck at recording that day. After that, it's the fun part, editing. On PlayStation, you can't just instantly size things fast. You have to search for the image, which is unorganized because you can't do that on ShareFactory for some reason. Then scale it up very slowly and rinse and repeat. You also add some effects like a fade in and out or all sorts of just weird effects you can do with text you can't just have it adjust to how much you have to type resize and type again until you get the right size so every individual me you see on screen is one image which in some videos this is upward of 20 to 50 me's you see on screen though once you do all this you're not done as you have to render the name of the file then copy it to a usb then upload it to youtube however before you upload it to youtube you have to have a title name and description figured out tags and all that as well as a thumbnail design which can take from 10 minutes to a day to figure out do all that and you're almost done add the cards where they should be and add the end screen and schedule it to upload now i didn't even mention the most tedious part about editing on playstation the images you can't just download them on playstation you have to download them on computer transfer to USB, and upload to the PlayStation to use. Now that I have a computer that can handle editing, a lot of this is alleviated off my shoulders, such as all the transferring and slowness of it for the most part. So if you remove the transfer from computer to console and the slowness of it, I'd say a video could take about five to six days to research, record, and edit. With all that transferring and stuff, it could take over a week to do, depending on what I already have on my console, and what my schedule is looking like, and just motivation as a whole. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm sharing this with you, and honestly, it's a point of perspective that saying someone is lazy for making a video like mine, a theory video, is not true. Anyone who steps up and says they have a theory and make a video about it, I give props to, as it is a struggle and annoying to do sometimes. I have been called lazy and many other things because I get something wrong or forget something, and honestly, who doesn't with FNAF? There's so much information in FNAF that even Scott himself has forgotten what is in the FNAF 4 box. Though, now that I explained all this, let's get into our special guests. Now this is pretty DIY, but you know what? Why solve something this easy? Why would I DI try? <laughs> all right, and for our first interview of the day, we have my fellow great friend FNAF theorist Crashmaster. If you'd like to introduce yourself, there, here you go. Hello, Mord. It is Crashmaster, and uh, I don't know. That's about it, I guess. That's usually what I say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you don't know, me and Crash have been working together a lot. I won't say on what. Maybe Crash will want to tease it at the end. Who knows? We'll see. But yeah, I've known Crash for a little bit, and we're both a bunch of idiots. So, um... <laughs> Before we get into, you know, the juicy questions of today, I'm saying this at the beginning of every single interview. Um, so to protect any identities of anyone who either has done something or to protect you, the content creator, anything like that, uh, there's no hate to anyone. Um, names probably won't be mentioned. I don't know. All this is off the cuff with a crash master. Nothing was written on his end. So this is just going to be whatever. So we'll see just kind of what happens. So. Yeah, again, no hate, no nothing, just examples and comments, hopefully. So, as a FNAF content creator, what's your current goal for FNAF? 
my current goal for FNAF. Okay, so I think right, like coming up soon, my goal is to sort of help try to clear up confusion in the community and in the series as well. Because obviously the series is 10 years old, going strong mm -hmm. still to this day. And there's, you know, that's a lot of history to keep up with just about everything, even at this point with just the games alone. There's just so much in general to do um, and to, like have to keep up with like you have the games and you have like all the versions and all the series of books, even the graphic novels like it, there's just so much content that you really have to keep up with. So I want to kind of have I, I want to kind of see if I can help kind of have like a thing where it's like, oh, you want all the information on this one subject or this one place or stuff like that. You can go and watch this video and stuff like that. Like that's kind of my goal. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. And you know, all I have to say is Fazgu. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh God. Yeah, uh, I'm touching. I'm gonna be specifically touching the games and stuff yeah. related to the games. Like if there's a like if it's a Fazbear Frights video, I'll touch on stories that involve spring trap and mm -hmm. fazbear frights yeah like even like the the one from fr like the book series which is like has hudson that guard i'll talk about mm -hmm. that i'm not i'm not any i don't think fazgo has anything important so <laughs> I'm, never, I'm never mentioning that yeah no i That's thought i'd mention that to see if i get you going on a tangent <laughs> no uh yeah you got me there like a little bit but like no no i refuse <laughs> to talk about fazgo i refuse all right, so then let's get to the next uh, juicy question. So as a content creator, what's something that you started to notice within the FNAF community that can bother you? Oh, okay. So obviously I've been a fan of, well, I say obviously, I think a lot of us are fans of a lot of these channels who are pretty big, got hundreds to thou hundred thousands to millions of subscribers. Mm -hmm. Obviously one of, if not the first one in the theorizing space of FNAF is game theory. Yep. And honestly, <clears throat> it's the thing where I think some people always do forget that it is literally is a thing where it's like, I think it's the fact that sometimes when Mappa and his team present videos, they do it in such a way where it's like, you know, they poured a lot of effort into it with all like the effects and all this effort. Even at the end of the video, it is just a theory, which it is. I think it's the the fact that you know they present it so it, it feels like even at the end of the day that's kind of what they believe in and i think mm -hmm. in some sense that, that is the case but it is just a theory they always admit i'm wrong or this happened they show their mistakes they show their flaws if scott says something they take it back and they're like oh yeah it's not this or they'll change their mind later mm -hmm. so it's a thing where, and in one of the major instances, it wasn't actually game theory with MatPag specifically. It was with John FNAF, mm -hmm. where I remember he made a few, I want to say he made some videos on the Mimic and Baby a while back. And just the fact that he said he mentally had some like issues due to the fact that a lot of the comments and a lot of the feedback on that video he got made him very, very like sad. Um, it, it, it messed with him mm -hmm. that really that really got to me for i, I felt that because I, even though i've never personally been attacked like that on any of my videos or anything i understand how that could feel when you put something out there and then people just immediately kind of target it and really trash on it spring lock suits are a lot more advanced than most people think like they had the spring lock suits in the early 80s late 70s that can like turn and walk around towards people on sound cues like yeah you know there are things like that where technology is something that you kind of have to just put aside some of the times in the fnaf universe so it's one of those things where i just felt really bad for john uh when he said it really messed with him how people reacted to that and you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying you have to agree. I'm not saying you have to say, oh, yeah, John's always 100% right or everything like that. I'm just saying just respectfully do that because I have actually disagreed with some people and I have left comments like, I don't really believe this and here's my argument why, but I never ever try to be mean, be disrespectful, be trash. I guess, I guess to just kind of put it back to, uh, put it back um, to the main focus of the question, I just hate the fact that people just objectively objectively either think they are right 
or it's more like I just hate the fact that when people put a theory out there and they put time and effort, a lot of editing, and you know they hire they might hire an editor or people to make the thumbnails, and that video gets trashed on. I hate that, especially in FNAF, where I'm not saying you ha you don't have to agree hundred percent, you don't need to like the people, but at least try to hear them out and just write a comment. Don't trash on the person, especially because mm -hmm. what if that happens to you? You know. Nobody wants to feel like that. All right. Well, I completely agree with everything you said. And even I've had things like that happening where people trash on my videos. And like, there are even times where you and I will be saying a call forever and you'll be challenging my thoughts and theories. And not once have I ever been like, man, this dude's kind of a jerk. <laughs> like, you've always <laughs> I, been so I, I nice and respectful not. about it. So thank you for that. And no problem. No problem. Let's get into the next question. Now, you kind of already answered this one unintentionally, but if there's anything you want to add to it, you can so as a content creator what would you like to see change with the fnaf community if you'd like to add in general the game as a whole to make things better okay so yeah well like i, I kind of partially answered like i would just like there to be a little bit more consideration and a little more like understanding and respect and respectfulness around where we are all working with the same information mm -hmm. and it's the thing where FNAF is it's 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 it, at the end of the day it's a story and yeah. it's literature so for the games for the, just to make sure for the games just to, I'll answer this last the second part the games as a whole I think the games are all fine per, personally I I don't defend security breach but I think that it was a project that was too ambitious and they definitely either should have pushed it back or they should have tried to make it smaller to some extent, which, you know, there was a lot of stuff that seemed to be cut content and a lot of stuff like that. And I know there's a whole thing with the interview, like, oh, yeah, Scott didn't really tell them the story, which I'm like, Scott, you can't do that. Overall, I think the games, uh, like, I, it's one of those things where, t to me, too, just to kind of say this quick, I, I don't want to make this too long, like you said, um, where it's, I don't make games. I'm not a computer person like that. I do a lot more of my stuff hand hands on. So I'm like, I don't criticize someone unless it's worth criticizing. And all the FNAF games, I like FNAF 3 and I like FNAF 6. I know people have some problems with those games, but I personally like them. And I even like Sister Location FNAF 4. Like FNAF 4, yeah, I can't play that thing because it's like, oh, it frustrates me. I, <laughs> I saw your videos too where it's like, ugh. But overall, I think Scott did great work. Especially with UCN, like, I know it's like, oh, the jump scare stuff like that, but can you tell me, people, that you could casually make a game with 50 plus animatronics and you're going to make all of them look good? Plus with the limitations of saying. Click Team. Yeah, and this is one guy, besides the voice lines, which Scott did early on by himself pretty much, like, you know, this isn't like, oh, he's got like the best hardware, the best tech, he's got like a whole team, no, this is a, just Scott Cawthon alone mm -hmm. with a couple of people doing voice acting. So I want people to really think about that. I'm not saying the gameplay is all great. I'm not saying that not everything is good or even okay. Yeah. I'm just saying this is mostly one guy who's making the games at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. not only that, I think like going on past Security Breach, I think Steel Wool did amazing with everything. VR was really, really cool. The bugs, you can't tell me the Glam Rocks don't look cool. The location is cool. Vanny and Vanessa are really cool. Whatever amount you see. And the like Help Wanted 2 and Ruin are so atmospheric, they're so well made, and ever since Help Wanted 2 came out, that's like the top game of, in a lot of people's heads, so yeah, I think <laughs> as a whole, just a little more, you know, just a little more managing of the time and the story, Scott, please actually tell the developers what you want them to make, mm -hmm. and oh, but besides that, I think all the games are just great, I think the games in general are the fine the way they are. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And well, we got one last question. This is going to be the fun, interesting one. If you do share anything, um, mm. is there anything you'd like to add or say any future project teas for your channel or my channel? Uh, does it have to be FNAF related or no? It can be anything. Okay, so, um, yes. Yeah, so I, there are there are many videos planned for my channel in specific. Like I said, I'm going to cover Sister Location, and it's it's mostly Sister Location focused, but it will be covering many of the original games. I'm not really touching on stuff past Help Wanted. Warning, they are going to be controversial, my conclusions. It's not. It's a theory <laughs> video. I'm presenting it as a story to see if maybe this could work. 
Because honestly, I think it's a very satisfying way. I know there are mm -hmm. like multiple ways at this point to make the FNAF timeline, but I think this is another way that could work. It will be out hopefully in October or November, my personal video, because the second one is the video we're working on. And by the way, to anybody who saw the announcement or anything like that, that was my fault. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm in college. It stuff happens, especially up here. My, I, I take medication and stuff like that. I, I, I swear. <laughs> Don't blame Nero. This is really on me for <laughs> delaying the video. Because editing <laughs> audio and all the footage. Oh boy, you have no idea. If we ever do Nero, if we ever do a video talking about the process of that video, holy crap! I think we should. <laughs> honestly. What did I have to record and edit? Yeah, no, I definitely think we should because you sent me a screenshot of what your editor looks like and I can't even see the clips. It's just a series of lines. <laughs> That's how tiny I had to make them to fit them all. <laughs> and like you said, you had like three to four hours of recording worth to go through and you're down to like an hour and a half now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably edit some more later, maybe even tomorrow, honestly, see if I could just kind of finish that. But yeah, besides um those sister location videos and and uh basically our collaboration on uh the the kind of the conclusion of like the MCI center theories, um not too much. Just um after that, I'm probably just gonna I am th trying to I'm basically trying to get settled with mm -hmm. my schedule with classes and my work um, just to meet so I feel really confident and I'm sure I'm not falling behind. So when I'm steady and stable, I'll probably be back to uploading regular gameplay videos at the time. Yeah, definitely. That'll hopefully make videos come out faster as well. I don't need to edit these giant projects ever again. Please, no, <laughs> Nero, please, no. Uh, no, I will make you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm look. I'm the. I'm in the editor dungeon. He's. I'm in Nero's editor dungeon. Please you're, help yep, me. You're my editor attic. <laughs> oh, the editor attic. You're up here with me. I'm in the fanatic. I'm in the no, fanatic. Help me. Save me, internet. Save me. <laughs> Alrighty, well, that's all that we got for this. So I do again want to thank you for being here. This was an absolute joy to record and. Hopefully we can get that video out. And you know what? Maybe at the end of this whole entire episode, I might put something right at the exact very end of the last second of a slight maybe video teaser of it. So yeah, otherwise Ooh. let's get into our uh, next uh, interview for the day. The outside juniors could just be none other than William Afton. Remember how I brought All right, and for the next interview, we have Withered Circle. Hey, uh, I'm Withered Circle. Um, I do FNAF Furies and stuff, just like Narrow Raven, and yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> well, that was a really quick introduction, but yeah, I've I been... don't have I, I don't have much to say about myself. <laughs> I, I'm just the FNAF purist. Yeah, no, I've been watching your content for a while. I found you um like a year ago, I think, when I was going through my surgeries and everything. So it's so cool to actually Damn. be able to work with you. Well, yeah, it's pretty cool to work with you too. I I, I also found you like forever ago. That, uh, but my content was very about. different back then. Yeah, my content was very different back then. Mm -hmm. Apart from the voice, obviously. I just had a different thought process. Yeah, and you know, um, that that's how we all grow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a natural, like, evolution. Mm hmm Well, I'm going to get into just, you know, the quick first question, which is just, how's your day going? Uh, it's going pretty good. Um, I'm getting ready to beat Sister Location later today. Mm -hmm. By the time you're hearing this, it's probably, like... I've already beat it two times, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going pretty good. Well, that's good. Me and you are both doing the same thing with uh, FNAF's location because I'm playing on also uh, being it after I do this with you, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, perfect. So. Very synchronized. Yep, yeah, I'm doing the exact same thing, but let's get into now the juicy stuff. Now, um, before I get into these uh, questions, I do just quickly say this in the beginning of each interview. Um, to protect anyone who is either involved with anything that's said and to protect you or anyone. Um, there's no hate towards anyone. This is just experiences yeah. and thoughts. There's no hate, no ill will, just experiences and examples. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get into the well, first question, which is just what's your current goal for FNAF as a YouTuber? What are you trying to accomplish with it? Um, I, I like setting small objectives. Right now, I want to make like a 
broad ultimate timeline by December, just like the end of the year. Mm -hmm. I, I did make like a small timeline on stream like a week or two ago. I I just want to lay out like a good basic story so, for people to understand that FNAF isn't actually as complex as they make it out to be. At least that's my current objective. Okay, yeah, no, that's a really good goal. I, I share that one with you a lot. So, nice goal. Yeah. Uh, next, next question. So, as a content creator, what's something that you started to notice within the FNAF community that can bother you? One main thing I feel like for me is um, people tend to have like a very, if you're not with me, you're against me kind of philosophy mm -hmm. in this space. Where just because I believe one theory and I don't believe your theory, oh yeah, you're wrong, my opinion is always right. If people seem to be very defensive of their opinions. I think a perfect example of this is like when um, Five Laps of Freddy's demo came out mm -hmm. and you had the whole like Afton MM discourse. So I was non Afton MM and I was very clear about that and I had a whole big deal about that. And, but then the demo came out and I'm like, oh, okay, well, looks like I have to change my timeline. I feel like that's a sentiment that not a lot of people share. I feel like not many people are open to growing theory-wise. I see this particularly with, with like big YouTubers, I feel like I've, that's an issue. Mm -hmm. And even just like not YouTubers. I feel like we just need to accept that some things in this franchise have to change. So yeah, I just think we have to learn to evolve our timeline, I guess, our ideas. Yeah, no, I completely agree with this. And I like that you brought up the, you know, like, bigger YouTubers, because that is something I was going to bring up in the video, but I just yeah, ended yeah, up yeah. not doing it, because it was going to be, like, a whole nother subsection that could just go in a million different directions. Mm -hmm. But I completely yeah. agree with what you said, that it does feel like it's hard to accept that something needs to change, whether it be lore or gameplay or really anything FNAF-related. Yeah, yeah. So next question so as a content creator what would you like to see change with the fnaf community and if you like to add in general the game as a whole to make things better the game as in like the f the theorizing game just the general like scene is that, is that what you mean or just the series of games so kind of like you know the community but also like how, if there's anything that the games could change like you know maybe give us more answers or how they give us answers or things like that is there anything you would just change in general theory wise and game wise okay so i'm gonna start with what i'd like to change in the fnaf community because that kind of ties into the last question and i'll go into the games mm -hmm. so yeah apart from the whole like we need to learn to evolve thing we also need to be much less hostile and we need to be much more accepting of alternate perspectives not just a matter of oh yeah this has been debunked time to move on but also a matter of this is the alternate possibility so lately in general just for a while now the big i feel like separation between the fan base is obviously the books fazbear frights and mm -hmm. tales from the pizza plex game theory is infamous for being the channel that proposed like oh yeah maybe frights happens in the games and got flamed for it and mathbat's like yeah we're just n never doing this again and they created a whole like parallels route which is it's a very big deal now a lot of people hate it a lot of people love it you know but yesterday as of the recording of this the fury video about into the pit big difference because tom acknowledged that maybe the books being in the games is a possibility and i feel like this is the right direction because yeah like we need to acknowledge alternate povs and like alternate things and i think that would be very important for the fan base mm -hmm. and not just like overanalyze stuff in general i feel we need to be like other fan bases where we don't freak out over tiny design changes and stuff mm -hmm. as for the games to be honest the games are headed in the right direction i feel like with steel wall because steel wall has a more natural story progression than the early scott games in my opinion mm -hmm. because looking back at those scott games you kind of just see oh yeah he, d he didn't get external feedback on the lore, he got external feedback on the gameplay. So the gameplay improved, but the lore didn't m become more accessible. Like, there were games like FNAF 3 where it's very accessible, very easy to understand, then FNAF 4 no one could understand anything. Now that you've got Steel Wool that have their own story that they want to make, and they've got feedback from other people, I think that's a very, very good thing for these games. I think that the whole evidence part is headed in the right direction, so... Yeah, those are my thoughts. 
you know, this is just going to completely go off script. I'm going to ask you one other question. So, with go Steel ahead. Wool, um, do you think that eventually they're going to be giving us a lot of questions, but then as the games progress, we're just going to get, like, answers back to back as, like, we get more towards, like, the end of Mimic Saga, essentially? I feel like we're already getting pretty close to the end of Mimic Saga, because let's be honest, all we need now is Secret of the Mimic and possibly a Ruined sequel, which mm -hmm. shouldn't even take that long, like, let's be honest. I'm expecting both of those to come out next year. Yeah, no, One I of them being, agree. like, a secret project, and yeah. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I feel mm -hmm. like Secret of the Mimic will explain Mimic, just, okay, why is, what is this Endo doing? And just definitively say, oh, is Tails slash Fright scan into the games or not? That mm -hmm. was what I said for Into the Pit. It wasn't true, but we can hope. Yeah, we no, hope I, was, I was hoping the exact same thing for that Into the Pit yeah. game. Yeah, just a definitive answer, but, you know, in this franchise, it's very hard. Yeah. But, yeah, I feel like we will get, like, very close... Very close um, answers to everything. At least I hope, because I, I'd hate it if they just left it completely open without anything but yeah yeah no i would hate that too but then you know last question of the day so it's just is there anything you like to add or say any future project teasers for your channel my channel or just really anything just kind of go nuts i've got lots of projects planned. <laughs> i have like a giant schedule and i and i have no idea when i want to do all that stuff apart from the big timeline that, I've, that i talked about a bit earlier um I have like, I just want to tackle like game by game, sort of, just do like a, oh yeah, this is like the early games, this is the late games. I do want to do some stuff about the games that I don't cover as much, like Sister Location, which I streamed, FNAF World as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just want to have a broader perspective on FNAF, want to do some more collaborations with other people. Yeah, that's pretty much it for big like general plans and not like hyper specific little stuff. Yeah, no, that sounds really exciting. And just just to be safe, is there anything else that you want to say, just in case? Um, I don't know. I don't really have anything to say. Just, I guess, thanks for having me on here for this quick little interview. And that's pretty much all I have to say. I said everything before. Well, thank you so much for being willing to be on this. Literally, pretty much the day before the video is supposed to release. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. I, I, I thought it was going to be a little later, but sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, there, Um, I'll tell you off screen uh, why that is. So, but. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, um, the again. The viewers will never know. Yeah, the viewers will never know until uh, the thing in question does release. So. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so again, thank you so much, uh, Wizard Circle, for uh, being yeah, here. Thanks for having um, me. Please do go check him out. All of his links and stuff will be in the description. Really cool dude. So go check him out. Um, well, thanks. Yeah. Otherwise, I believe that should be the last uh, interview for the video. So let's get into our next section. Okay, so what can we do to be better? Well, I'll simply give a list. First, calm down. It's just a theory. And if someone gets something wrong or forgets a point or an issue, just probably call it out and have a conversation with the theorist, as I'm sure they'll be happy to learn more knowledge about their theory or someone else's theory that they are covering. Second, help each other. Theories are a chore to make with how much goes into it. So if someone posts a video and gets something wrong or forgets something, maybe your point will inspire them to make a video about that point or even a theory you just throw their way. It's happened to me before. Third, don't assume. We assume so much in the community of what is and isn't true or canon. We should always take things with a grain of salt until we get irrefutable proof that it is or isn't canon before we say something is or isn't. And lastly, listen to game theory. Because remember, it's just a theory. A game theory! I miss you, Matt Pat. Okay, so I do want to say again, I love FNAF in the community, and anyone who was in this video, I also still love to see in my comments. However, I also want to say that I'm not just a character on a screen. I am a human behind this screen and mask, so don't think for a second that I won't pull that mask down to be brutally honest with you all. I know the FNAF community can be an amazing place, and a welcoming place, and I think that's what we all want. I also think we can all solve FNAF if we work together and not against each other. Maybe someone who has a crazy theory is right. Maybe they're wrong. Regardless, it's no reason to scare them away from the community or theory making. I've been making theories for about a year now, 
and the amount of things I've learned about making theories in the FNAF community is insane. I'm still learning how to make better theories, and I hope that not just I, but all of us can strive to be not just better theorists or community, but just people as a whole. All right, and that is all that I have for this episode. So before I do end this, there's a couple things I do want to say. First off, um, with Crash's interview, there will be an uncut version of it uploaded to my extras channel. Um, don't worry, I did not nitpick anything. Crash was there when I was editing his section, so there's nothing that like I took out of context or anything. It's just the importance of because some things were repeated, but the whole 20 minute, 22 minutes of just straight footage will be uploaded to the extras channel probably today or tomorrow. I don't know. I'm kind of feeling a little and today with my body so i might just rest after i record this because if you don't know i did all the interviews and fish this video the day before this is supposed to come out which is literally tomorrow i believe it's the 16th I could be wrong but yeah the other thing is that um i do have another interview that i couldn't fit into the video because it was so long it's actually longer than this video with us uh, springs fnaf time um spring will be uploading it to his channel and i will also upload it to my channels um I'm the one editing it, so it might take a little bit, so I do apologize if it takes a little bit. I'm hoping to get out within the next week or two. It depends how with college goes and everything, but I will be trying to get that out to you all as soon as possible. One other thing, um, I am going to be appearing on another uh, YouTuber's channel and just kind of see who I'm kind of, I guess, talking with or I guess who's in the YouTube, uh, like in my homepage the fellow FNAF theorists, I'm going to be on one of their channels. So who knows? We'll see who it is when that happens. It should be happening pretty soon, but we'll see. And yeah, um, I did say that I might do something at the very end of this for a little sneak peek into the next episode. And well, I thought I would do it right here, right now. So um, before I go and show this clip, um, I'm just going to quickly do... The outro stuff typically um so again i'm not going to be asking for any subscription or anything just share this video with anyone you know everyone you know because i just want that message getting out there and comment down below your thoughts comments anything just please do keep it kind calm and respectful as i will not be responding to any mean or hurtful or hateful comments as we're just here for a discussion and as always i hope you enjoyed have a great day stay safe and roll the clip Hey, this is my channel. Let me explain this part. Okay, so for the story for...